Are you looking for an ultra-wide monitor for gaming? Luckily for you, Samsung released a 34-inch monitor as part of their Odyssey lineup. We recently bought and tested the Samsung Odyssey G5, the 34-inch variant, and today we'll discuss our findings with you. Hi, I'm Kelsey at TestAirRatings.com, where we help you find the best product for your needs. First, we'll look at the design of the monitor, and then we'll move on to the inputs. Then we'll break down the results by each usage, such as gaming, HDR gaming, office use, and content creation. Afterwards, we'll finish with our verdict and compare it to other competing models on the market. We bought the 34-inch Samsung Odyssey G5 LC34G55T to test, which is the only size available for the ultra-wide variant. The Samsung Odyssey G5 is also available in the 27 and 32 inch models, but they perform differently because they have a different aspect ratio and lower refresh rate. We also bought the 27 inch Odyssey G5 to test, which you can read about here. If you'd like to skip straight to our test results, then see the links in the description below. Before getting into the nitty gritty, let's look at the design. The 34 inch Samsung Odyssey G5 is essentially a larger version of the 27 inch model. It features the same design with a 1000R curved screen, which is pretty aggressive. It has an all plastic black body with a gamer friendly design. The stand has a V-shaped feet that look like most Samsung monitors. It feels cheap and attaches to the monitor with basic clips. The back of this monitor looks pretty basic. The 75 by 75 VESA holes are visible and the cutout in the back looks like there's something missing there. Also, the VESA holes aren't even centered with the entire screen. There's a small hook in the stand for cable management which helps keep your setup clean. Sadly, the ergonomics of the Odyssey G5 are terrible. You can only tilt the stand within a narrow range and even at that, the hinge is tough to move. It's hard to place the screen in an ideal viewing position but that's also somewhat expected for an ultra-wide monitor. Overall, the build quality is decent. It's made out of basic plastic that doesn't feel anything special and feels a bit cheap. It's well built together and there's nothing that's visibly wrong with it, but it still doesn't feel premium either. We'll look at the results soon, but let's look at the inputs first. It's pretty limited on inputs. There are DisplayPort 1.4 and HDMI 2.0 inputs. You also get an audio output so you can connect speakers or your headphones to it. There's a USB port that you can use for servicing. But other than that, there really isn't much. The screen itself is big and offers a ton of space so that you can open multiple windows next to each other. It has a 21 by 9 aspect ratio, which is what sets it apart from the 27 and 32 inch models because those have a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. This monitor has a 3440 by 1440 resolution, which results in a pixel density of 108 pixels per inch. Finally, let's look at the additional features, but there aren't many. You get a picture by picture mode, so you can display images from two sources at once side by side. There's also an eye saver mode that reduces the amount of blue light and you can add a virtual crosshair on the screen for FPS games. Now we'll move on to the testing results, but we're going to sort them by usages. If you want to compare it to other monitors as we buy and test them, check out our table tool here, where you can sort by different usages and test results. One of the most important parts of gaming is refresh rate. This is how many times per second the screen refreshes itself and displays a new image. This is important for motion handling. While the 27 inch model of the Odyssey CG5 has 144 Hertz refresh rate, the 34 inch one can get up to 165 Hertz. It has variable refresh rate support or VRR to reduce screen tearing when gaming. It has native FreeSync support and we confirm G-Sync works with Nvidia graphics card. However, we experienced some issues with the VRR, which we don't want to get into the detail about the issues here, so you can read about them on the review. But essentially, if you're going to game at 165 Hz, you shouldn't have any problems. Now let's move on to motion handling, and an important part of it is the response time. This is the time it takes for pixels to change from one color to the next, and a slow response time usually results in smearing with fast moving objects. We measure the response times at its max refresh rate and at 60 Hz. When gaming at 165 Hz, the response time is good, but it's still not as good as other 165 Hz monitors, which is a bit disappointing. It's a bit slower in dark transitions, which could result in some motion artifacts. 
At 60 Hz, the response times are actually quicker by a few milliseconds, but there's more overshoot, so you can see visible ghosting behind fast moving objects. Whether you're gaming at 165 Hz or 60 Hz, we recommend setting the overdrive setting to fastest, because it results in the quickest response time, but at the cost of adding some overshoot. Let's look at the input lag now. This is the delay in time from when you input your action to when it appears on screen. Like most gaming monitors in 2021, the input lag is incredibly low, whether you're gaming at its max refresh rate or 60 Hz. Now that we talked about gaming specific results, let's have a quick look at picture quality. If you game in a dark environment, then the contrast ratio is one of the most important aspects of picture quality. This is the difference between black and white. The Odyssey G5 has a VA panel, which are known for their high contrast, and this one is no exception. We measured a contrast of over 4,500 at one, so blacks look deep when viewed in the dark. This is higher than the advertised 2500 or one contrast, but it can also vary between units. Even though it doesn't have local dimming feature, it's still a great choice for gaming in the dark. Lastly, let's look at the reflection handling. This is key if you game in a bright room or if there are a few lights around, like RGB lighting from your peripherals. This monitor has good reflection handling with a matte screen finish. It's fine if you have a few light sources around, but it can be distracting if there's tons of light on it. Overall, the Odyssey G5 is great for gaming. We encountered a ton of issues while testing, but it has features and performance most gamers are looking for, such as VRR support, quick response times, and low input lag. Now let's look at HDR gaming performance. HDR, or high dynamic range, is a video format meant to increase details in dark and bright scenes. Like with gaming in HDR, it still has quick response times and low input lag. We didn't measure HDR input lag because you could only hit a refresh rate of 100 Hz over HDMI, which doesn't meet our testing standards of measuring input lag at a max refresh rate. However, we don't expect the HDR input lag to increase. In 10-bit HDR, the max refresh rate over HDMI is 60 Hz, and you can hit 120 Hz over a DisplayPort connection. To avoid experiencing VRR issues in HDR, we suggest setting the monitor's refresh rate to 120 Hz over a DisplayPort, because we didn't experience any issues with it then. If you plan on gaming in HDR, there are a few things to look at when it comes to picture quality. First, the contrast is once again important because it allows the monitor to produce more details in dark scenes. It also makes blacks look black when looking at dark scenes in dark rooms. Since the contrast ratio in our unit is already excellent, it helps improve the picture quality in HDR. We just talked about details in dark scenes, but what's important for details in bright scenes? The answer to that is HDR brightness. The brighter monitor can get in HDR, the better it is at displaying brighter details. In this case, the HDR brightness is just okay. It doesn't get bright enough to truly make highlights stand out in HDR. Finally, it's also important for the monitor to display a wide color gamut for HDR content, which is the range of colors it can display in HDR. Sadly, this monitor can't display a wide color gamut because it can't display all colors needed for HDR content. And combined with its low brightness, HDR content won't look much different than SDR content. Most gaming monitors in 2021 aren't that good for HDR gaming and the Odyssey G5 is no exception. It has the gaming features you need, but it's not that good at displaying HDR content. If you truly want the best HDR experience, it's probably best to go for a small TV. By the way, before we speak about other uses, if you enjoy our content, please make sure you subscribe to our channel for the latest videos and check out our website for the full review and more. By subscribing, you're helping us reach a wider audience and in turn, helping you find the best products for your needs. Also, visit this product deal page on our website linked below you'll find all available sizes from our affiliates presented in a convenient way. Now let's move on to the performance for office use. Although it's not designed for this use and it's geared towards gamers, it's still decent if you want to use it in an office. The main advantage of the 34 inch Odyssey G5 is just how big it is. The large screen has plenty of space for you to open multiple windows side by side. It has a 3440 by 1440 resolution, which helps it achieve good text clarity. We suggest using Windows Clear Type to get the sharpest text possible, but even without it, the text still looks good. Having a monitor with wide viewing angles is important if you need to share your screen with others around you. 
This way, the image stays accurate whether you're viewing it from directly in front or from the side. Sadly, this monitor has narrow viewing angles because of its VA panel. The image quickly starts to look inaccurate when viewing off-center, so it's not ideal for sharing your screen with others. Also, because the screen is so big, if you sit too close, the edges of the screen can look washed out. The aggressive curve is meant to reduce that issue, though. What makes the screen even harder to share with others is the fact that it has terrible ergonomics. So if you need to turn the screen to show someone else, you would need to rotate the entire thing because the stand doesn't offer any swivel adjustments. Also, there's no height adjustments either, which can be disappointing if you need to raise the screen to your eye level. As we mentioned before, having good reflection handling is key if you work in a well-lit environment. You don't want reflections from windows or light sources to become distracting to the point where you can't see the screen. It has good reflection handling, enough for an office space with a couple of light sources around, but we don't suggest putting it opposite of a window with direct sunlight on it. If the reflection handling isn't enough, then you always want a monitor with high SDR peak brightness. It's decent and gets bright enough to fight some glare, but once again, it won't be bright enough to combat glare in really bright rooms. All things considered, the Odyssey G5 is decent for office use. It mainly scores lower according to our testing standards because of the narrow viewing angles and terrible ergonomics. So if you're just gonna sit directly in front of the screen and don't need to share it with others around you, then you should be happy with it. If you're a content creator, you need the most out of the same features that we just talked about with office use. Larger screens are great if you need to see your entire video timeline without scrolling too much. Also, because it has a high resolution, it delivers crisp images. It's not as good as a 4K monitor, but it's still good enough for most people. However, since it has a curved screen, straight lines may not appear straight to some people, which could be a deal breaker. As we mentioned, you need wide viewing angles if you want to share your screen with others. Unfortunately, this monitor really isn't a good choice for sharing the monitor with a coworker or client because they'll see an inaccurate image. The same goes about ergonomics. Since they're terrible, you won't be able to easily swivel the screen to show to someone else. You would need to buy a mounting arm and wall mount the screen if you really need that. One thing that we haven't talked about that's a big factor for content creators is the gray uniformity. This represents how well the monitor displays a single uniform color, like if you're on a web page or viewing a document. Our unit has excellent gray uniformity. The edge of the screen are a bit darker, but it's not too bad. You shouldn't have any issues, but keep in mind that uniformity can vary between units. Lastly, if you're a photo or video editor, you're going to want a monitor with a wide SDR color gamut. This is the range of colors it can display in SDR. So you want the monitor to accurately reproduce the colors you need. It has an excellent color gamut because it has a near perfect coverage of the sRGB color space that's used in most content. It also has good coverage of the Adobe RGB color space used in photo editing. Because of its wide SDR color gamut, it has a fantastic color volume, meaning it can display colors at a wide range of luminance levels. You should also know that our unit has excellent out-of-the-box color accuracy, so you may not need to get it calibrated to use it to its fullest. However, accuracy can vary between units. The Odyssey G5 is decent for content creators. It produces a wide range of colors and they're accurate, but the screen has narrow viewing angles and the ergonomics are terrible. Lastly, let's talk about performance for multimedia use. We're starting to get a bit repetitive in terms of what we're looking at, but we'll quickly go through everything again. If you want to watch your favorite videos and movies, the large screen provides an immersive viewing experience. However, it has a 21 by nine aspect ratio, which 16 by nine shows and most YouTube videos don't support. If that's the case, you'll see black bars on the sides. Luckily, widescreen movies are in this format, so it will fit out the entire screen. Once again, it has narrow viewing angles, so it's not a good choice for watching your favorite videos with a few friends around. It's best to watch from directly in front. If you tend to watch movies in dark rooms, the excellent contrast ratio helps it produce deep blacks. Although it doesn't have local dimming feature to further deepen any blacks, it's still better than many monitors we've tested. And if you want to watch videos in a well-lit room, then once again, you want that good reflection handling. If you're in a bright room, it's probably best to dim the lights a bit 
but the reflection handling is still good enough for a room with a couple of lights nearby. The Odyssey G5 is good for consuming multimedia content thanks to its larger screen and high contrast. Although you won't be able to watch native 4K content, it still should satisfy most people. Overall, the 34-inch Samsung Odyssey G5 is good. It performs best for gaming because that's what it's designed for. It has low input lag, VRR support, and quick response times, which are still sadly a bit slower than other similar monitors. Those who game in dark rooms should appreciate its high contrast ratio. It's decent for office use or for content creators, thanks to its large screen, but it has narrow viewing angles. Also, it's decent for HDR gaming, but HDR content doesn't look all that different from SDR content because it can't display a wide color gamut and has low HDR peak brightness. The Samsung Odyssey LC34G55T is essentially an ultra-wide version of the Samsung Odyssey G5 LC27G55T, but there are a few differences. The 34-inch model has a DisplayPort 1.4 input, while the 27-inch has a DisplayPort 1.2. This allows the 34-inch model to achieve higher refresh rate, and it has quicker response times. The 34-inch also has a higher contrast and better color accuracy but these can vary between units. The Samsung Odyssey G5 and the Gigabyte G34WQC are similar ultra-wide gaming monitors. They each have a 34-inch screen with 1440p resolution and a VA panel. With similar panel types, they each have high contrast ratio and narrow viewing angles. The Samsung has a higher 165Hz refresh rate compared to the 144Hz on the Gigabyte, but motion still looks smoother on the Gigabyte. Also, the Gigabyte is better for use in bright rooms because it gets much brighter. Lastly, the Gigabyte stand has height adjustment, which the Samsung doesn't have. So that's it. What do you think of the 34-inch Samsung Odyssey G5? Is this monitor going to be on your must-buy list? Let us know below. Also, we're a growing company and are expanding into other product categories. As a result, we are currently hiring in our offices in Montreal for various positions. So if you want to help people find the best product for their needs, have a look at our careers page on our website. You can check out all the measurements on our website. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. You can also become an insider on the website for early access to our latest results. So that's it. Thank you for watching and see you next time.